Hey everyone, Joe here from Avalon. Today we're diving into a crucial topic for all you budding entrepreneurs and business owners out there. We're talking about the ins and outs of incorporating your business. Now, incorporating isn't just about making your business official. It's a decision that could have significant financial implications, both good and bad. In this video, we're going to explore the key points you need to know before incorporating that will help you save thousands of dollars. We'll discuss the potential benefits of incorporation, but also the risks and costs that could sneak up on you if you're not careful. So whether you're just starting out or thinking about taking your business to the next level, this video is for you. It could save you thousands by helping you avoid some common yet costly pitfalls. And stick around to the end of the video where we're gonna calculate the money you could save by making the right decision. All right, let's get started and make sure you're fully informed before making that big leap. Now let's start by assessing your business goals. Understanding the goals you want to achieve with your business can guide whether or not to incorporate. Making the right decision here can save you a lot of money. I'll take you through an exercise that involves asking yourself 10 questions about your business and your intentions for it. Your answers to these questions will help you better understand whether incorporation is a reasonable route for you. You can also find a link in the description below that will take you to a worksheet. Now this worksheet will help you follow along and complete the exercise for yourself. Answer the questions in the sheet and you may find your decision starts to become more clear. So let's get into it. Now the first question is about your plan for the business. Ask yourself, do you plan on building your business into something that is more than just self-employment? If you wanna grow it into something bigger with a team and operations at a larger scale, then this points you more towards incorporation. Now the second question to ask yourself is, does your business have significant potential for legal liability? Incorporating can provide some protection against liability. So if you're in a higher risk business like construction or transportation, then incorporating could be more attractive. Now question three is a fun one. Do you expect your business to earn more net income in a given year than you might use personally? Incorporation can provide some flexibility for you on how you pay yourself. This gives you options that could help you defer paying tax on income until a later date. Now, if you expect to earn more income than you might spend personally each year, then this is another point in the direction of incorporation. Next up, it's time to think about investment into your business. Ask yourself, do you plan or would you like the option of having others invest in your business? Corporations provide more ways for others to invest in your business compared to running an unincorporated business. A yes here points towards incorporation. Question five requires a bit more forward thinking. Ask yourself, do you plan to sell the business in the future? Now, if the answer here is yes, or even maybe, then incorporation could be the right move. Selling your incorporated business in Canada could give you access to the lifetime capital gains exemption, and this allows you to sell the business at a gain of around $1 million without having to pay a cent of tax. Now, that's pretty cool. All right, moving on to questions 6 through 10. These will look and sound a little different from the first set. Question 6 is next. Please ask yourself this. Is the main purpose of your business so you can be self-employed as opposed to building a business that involves others? If you just want to be your own boss, but don't have intentions of growing the business further than just yourself, then an unincorporated business may be better. Next question is about the cost of incorporating. Ask yourself, does the annual upkeep cost of approximately three to $5,000 outweigh the potential benefits of operating as a corporation? If that cost sounds too high compared to the benefits of incorporating, then that might be a good indicator for you that an unincorporated business is a better option. Next up, do you expect to have significant losses in the first year or a couple years of the business? If you're just getting started and you expect to have more expenses than revenue in the first year, then you may want to delay incorporating. This isn't a really big factor, but you can offset personal income with unincorporated business losses in the year that they happen. If you're operating as a corporation, then the losses would get carried forward and applied against future corporate income or profits. It's just a matter of being able to use losses now compared to using them later with the corporate route. Question nine is all about simplicity. Ask yourself, is simplicity in bookkeeping and taxes a priority for you? 
And really, we could apply this to compliance in general. If you value simplicity over the potential benefits of incorporating, then that might point you towards an unincorporated business. And lastly, ask yourself, are you mainly testing the waters for a business concept and unsure about its long-term viability? If the answer is yes, then it could be a better idea to wait and see if your business is viable before jumping in and incorporating. All right, if you've been following along on the worksheet link below, then you should have a count on your yes answers. You should see a score for incorporating and one for running an unincorporated business. Now, this is just a guideline and you shouldn't just count them up and make a decision based on the total score. For example, for the incorporation questions, you might have a single yes in that you plan on selling the business one day. The potential tax savings from using the lifetime capital gains exemption is huge and certainly worth more than many of the other criteria. The point of the worksheet is not to just count up the totals and pick that option. It's there to help you think about the decision and to outline some of the reasons why you might or might not want to incorporate. Hey, taking a quick break to tell you about my favorite tool for business owners. Xero is a cloud-based accounting solution that has helped us and our clients better manage their finances for years. Whether you're just starting out from scratch or scaling your business into the millions, Xero helps simplify your bookkeeping and gives timely, actionable information that you can actually use. It's user-friendly and will save you so much time on your bookkeeping tasks. We absolutely love Xero and think you could love it too. Check out their customizable solutions for small business owners by clicking on the link below. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. All right, next up, let's assume that you've decided to incorporate your business. We'll take a look at the potential pitfalls that could arise during the incorporation process and how to avoid costly mistakes there. Incorporating your business can be done in several ways, each with its own set of advantages, disadvantages, and costs. Here's how you can decide between doing it yourself, using online services like Owner, or hiring a full service law firm. First up is DIY incorporation. Many provinces in Canada have an online service that will help you file your own incorporation documents. This is the least expensive option with costs mainly consisting of government filing fees, which typically fall in the range of a few hundred dollars. Of the three methods, DIY incorporation is the most cost effective. However, it can be quite time consuming and comes with a higher risk of mistakes if you're unfamiliar with the legal requirements. It also lacks any personalized legal advice. DIY incorporation is a reasonable option for simple business models or when budget constraints are tight and you have the time to research and understand your legal requirements. The next method is basically a DIY method, but on a single comprehensive platform that also offers support. My favorite platform for incorporating is called Owner, spelled O-W-N-R. It walks you through incorporating and makes it really clear on how to get the job done. The cost is typically less expensive than a law firm, but slightly more than the DIY option. Prices vary depending on the service package, but typically range from four to $700. It's great for the fact that it's more affordable than a full service law firm, it's user friendly, automated, and you have the option of receiving some basic support. However, it's less personalized than a full service law firm and likely won't cover all unique legal needs or complex structures. It's a great option for small businesses with relatively straightforward legal needs that want a balance between cost, convenience, and access to some guidance. You can find our affiliate link in the description below that provides 20% off your incorporation costs with owner. And our last option is incorporating with a full service law firm. Now this is of course is gonna be your most expensive option with costs often ranging from 1500 to several thousand dollars, depending on the complexity of the incorporation and the rates of the firm. But it's great in that it gets you personalized legal advice, expertise in handling complex situations and a comprehensive service. However, it is easily the highest cost option and might be unnecessary for simple incorporations. Now, this option is best for businesses with complex legal needs, significant investment, or those planning on rapid growth and expansion that may require detailed legal and tax planning. And it's certainly a preferred method when you need to complete a Section 85 rollover. In other words, you have been running your business as a sole proprietorship for a while and now need to transfer assets into the corporation. Or it might also be your best option if you just want a bit more handholding and peace of mind. Making the wrong decision in how to incorporate can lead to unnecessary expenses either upfront or in the long run. 
Overpaying for a simple incorporation can eat into your initial capital, while underestimating legal needs can result in costly restructuring or legal fees later. My official advice is to ask your accountant and lawyer what their recommendation is and take that into consideration. Once you've chosen how to incorporate, you have a couple of other decisions to make. Now, the first is what will your share structure look like? It's a lengthy topic that we've already covered in another video and blog article linked below. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. So check out those links if you want the full rundown. However, it's important to consider who will be involved in the business, what rights you want them to have, and how you plan on distributing income from the corporation. Getting this wrong could mean you need to pay a lawyer and an accountant to help you restructure the company down the road. Your next choice relates to where you want to incorporate your business. You have the option of incorporating in your province or territory, or you can choose to federally incorporate. Incorporating provincially means your business is recognized and protected within the specific province or territory of registration and is subject to the local laws and regulations. It's typically best for businesses that intend to operate primarily within a single province or territory, offering simpler regulatory requirements and potentially lower costs. It's often not the best option for businesses aiming to expand nationally as name protection and corporate recognition are limited to the province or territory of incorporation. On the other hand, federal incorporation allows your business to operate under the name recognized across Canada. Your company would be governed by the Canada Business Corporations Act. This option offers wider corporate name protection and a more established presence nationwide. It's a great choice for businesses planning to operate in multiple provinces or territories, or those looking to expand their reach across Canada in the future. However, it may be unnecessary if your business will strictly operate within one province or territory. The method of incorporation requires compliance with both federal and local regulations, which can increase complexity and administrative tasks. Taking the time to plan ahead can help you choose the appropriate jurisdiction and avoid costly fees related to moving your company to another jurisdiction. Okay, so we've reviewed decision criteria and some pitfalls related to the incorporation process. Lastly, we'll look at some issues that can arise once you've incorporated and are running your business. Once your business is incorporated, it enters a new phase of legal and financial responsibilities. Yay. Compliance with these obligations is a critical aspect of maintaining your corporation's good standing and avoiding penalties. Corporations are required to file annual tax returns regardless of their operational status. This includes financial statements and corporate tax filings, which can be more complex than personal tax returns. Corporations need to maintain detailed records of their financial transactions, director and shareholder meetings, and corporate decisions. Failure to meet these obligations can result in fines, penalties, and interest charges. In severe cases, it could lead to the dissolution of the corporation. And as a business owner of a corporation, you'll probably want to pay yourself. <laughs> Hopefully. Now you have two primary ways to pay yourself, salary or dividends. Now each method has its own set of implications for personal income taxes and corporate compliance. I'll give you a quick overview of both, but you can always check out the video linked in the description below for our full rundown. Drawing a salary from your corporation means you become an employee of the company. This requires setting up a payroll system, remitting source deductions to the government and issuing T4 slips annually. This can increase administrative work and potentially your accounting fees when running your company. On the other hand, dividends are paid out of the corporations after tax profits and are taxed at a lower rate on an individual's income tax return. Filing a T5 slip annually is required to report these dividend payments. While dividends require less administrative work compared to a salary, they don't offer some of the same benefits as paying yourself as an employee. Choosing the wrong method for your situation or failing to meet the associated administrative and filing requirements can lead to tax inefficiencies and penalties. For example, late source deductions or misfiled documents can result in quickly escalating fines and interest charges. Again, if you want more info on paying yourself from your corporation, check out the link in the description below. And lastly, but definitely 
not leastly, it's important to talk about a major source of potential tax savings, the lifetime capital gains exemption. The lifetime capital gains exemption allows some Canadian business owners to sell the shares in their company at a gain of up to a million dollars before any taxes owing. It's pretty amazing. However, if your incorporated business is not set up properly, you won't be eligible to claim it. For this reason, it's important to start planning at least two years out before selling your business. It's best to consult with an accountant and a lawyer when you're getting ready to sell. Hundreds of thousands of dollars may ride on making sure the business is eligible. More information on the LCGE can be found in our video link below. All right, let's put it all together and look at how much it could cost you if you chose poorly. Or let's put a more positive spin on it and let's look at how much you could save by making the right decision. I don't want to keep you here for hours, so we'll just look at a few scenarios. First up, the scenario where you just want to be your own boss. In this case, if you decide not to incorporate, you could save anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 per year from avoiding corporate upkeep costs. There are still costs related to running an incorporated business, but they're generally much lower. Cost savings for choosing correctly, around $3,000 per year. For legal liability, I'm not even going to estimate a cost. If you're unlucky enough to be sued in your business, you'll probably still have to pay lawyers regardless of whether or not you're incorporated. The main point is that incorporating can provide some protection against liability. Cost savings zero because I don't know how to estimate that. Next up, the scenario where you earn more income in a year than you need personally. In this case, if you aren't incorporated, you might be forced into the highest tax bracket for the year. This means you could pay tax on a whole bunch of income at tax rates of over 50%. So let's say you live in Ontario and earn $500,000 per year, but you only need $200,000 for the year. Without incorporating, you would pay around $231,000 in tax. If you were incorporated, only withdrew the $200,000 that you needed for the year, your total tax would be around $107,000. Now, the $124,000 difference doesn't actually mean tax savings. Think of it more as a tax deferral. The CRA will get their money eventually. And lastly, if you were eligible for the lifetime capital gains exemption and sold your business at a gain of $1 million, you would pay a whopping $0 in tax on that sale. On the other hand, you would pay more than $200,000 in tax if you sold an unincorporated business for a similar gain. That's a pretty big penalty for making the wrong decision, so definitely keep that one in mind. Okay, time to wrap things up. We've journeyed through the critical aspects of incorporating your business from the initial decision-making process to understanding the ongoing responsibilities. By carefully considering your business goals, legal liability, earning potential, and long-term plans, you can make an informed choice that aligns with your vision and saves you money. Take the time to understand each step, consult with professionals when needed, and plan accordingly to make the most of your business structure. Thanks for joining me in this discussion. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more insights, and please share your thoughts or questions in the comments below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.